This is gonna be your reaction throughout the whole movie. Oh my god, what is going on here? My whole life was a lie. It's more like, you know, I gotta go get some coffee. So this guy right here is literally the funniest guy on planet Earth. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's your boy Rash with another video. Today I'm gonna be talking about some American films that you can watch to improve your English. And if you wanna watch this video with different subtitles, I have a bunch of subtitles down there. You can pick one of the subtitles and just watch the video in that specific language. If you can't find your language there, it must really suck. I'm obviously kidding. You can just hit me up and I'll add them. Not only am I going to show you how I personally improved my English by watching American films, I'm also going to recommend some comedians. But for now, I don't want to give you guys any hints. I'm just going to start with a video. There is no possibility to have a good film recommendation video without having tacos. And there is no possibility to have a good taco without guacamole. So I'm going to go for it. Oh my God. Look at this. Look at this. Mmm. Mm. Holy guacamole. 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 This is so sad. Alexa, play Despacito. Anyway, let's talk about the film, shall we? The first movie that I'm going to be talking about is my all time favorite movie, guys. And its name is Blow. And no, it's not porn. It's actually a film about drugs starring Johnny Depp. And I'm not that good of a storyteller. That's why I'm just going to read the plot summary on imdb.com. A boy named George Young grows up in a struggling family in the 1950s. His mother nags at her husband as he is trying to make a living for the family. It is finally revealed that George's father cannot make a living and the family goes bankrupt. George does not want the same thing to happen to him and his friend Tuna in the 1960s, as his friend's name is Tuna, and his other friend's name is Salmon, suggests that he deals marijuana. He's a big hit in California in the 1960s, yet he goes to jail where he finds out about the wonders of cocaine. Hey kids, don't do drugs. As a result, when released, he gets rich by bringing cocaine to America. However, he soon pays the price. Reading about the plot again reminds me how cool the movie actually was because it was published 20 years ago and I watched it probably like 10 times. My favorite scene was where George goes to Colombia to meet Pablo Escobar and they make a deal about bringing cocaine to the States. You definitely have to watch it, a very good movie to improve your English. Not only to improve your English, but also to have a good time. Okay, one of my all-time favorite movies, guys, is Shutter Island, starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Mark Ruffalo. And obviously, I'm going to talk about the storyline, but I'm not going to give you the end. I'm not going to tell you what's happening in the end because there's a big plot twist. No spoiler alert. If you haven't watched it yet, I'm not going to tell you what's happening. I'm just going to talk about the plot so that you can have an idea about the movie, but not about the plot twist, actually, because you'll be like, what the f***? did I just watch by the end of the movie? If not, I'll give you your money back, even though I'm not even the producer, but okay. okay. So it says in 1954, up and coming US Marshal Teddy Daniels is assigned to investigate the disappearance of a patient from Boston's Shutter Island Ashcliff Hospital. He's been pushing for an assignment on the island for personal reasons, but before long, he thinks he's been brought there as part of a twisted plot by hospital doctors whose radical treatments range from unethical to illegal to downright sinister. Wow. Teddy's shrewd investigating skills soon provide a promising lead, but the hospital refuses him access to records he suspects would break the case wide open. Huh. As a hurricane cuts off communication with the mainland, more dangerous criminals escape in the confusion and the puzzling improbable clues multiply. Teddy begins to doubt everything, his memory, his partner, even his own sanity. Now that's a plot. This is going to be your reaction throughout the whole movie. Okay, that's a good movie. That's that's pretty good. I like it so. Oh God, yes. Yes, Leo. You're such a great actor. Where is your Oscar? Oh my God, what is going on here? My whole life was a lie. So by the end of the movie, you'll be like, what kind of a sociopath thought of that storyline? I mean, it's definitely worth your time. You should go ahead and watch it. And it's definitely going to improve your English as well. Okay, another movie starring DiCaprio. I think it was published the same year. I'm not really sure. And the plot is actually pretty 
puzzling because I still don't know what happened in that movie. I just know that I liked it. And I know that Hans Zimmer did an amazingly terrific job with the music in that film. But I remember that by the end of the movie, I was not really sure what to get out of it. I wasn't sure of how it actually ended. And I even remember looking it up on Wikipedia and still not knowing how to think it ended. And I know I'm not the only one. If you watched it, tell me how you think it ended in the comments below. But I think it was supposed to be an open end. I'm not really sure. I'm just gonna give you guys the plot summary real quick. Dom Cobb is a skilled thief, the absolute best in the dangerous art of extraction, stealing valuable secrets from deep within the subconscious during the dream state when the mind is at its most vulnerable. Wow, what is going on? Cobb's rare ability has made him a coveted player in this treacherous new world of corporate espionage, but it has also made him an international fugitive and cost him everything he has ever loved. It's getting even crazier. Now Cobb is being offered a chance at redemption Huh, one last job could give him his life back, but only if he can accomplish the impossible. Inception. Instead of the perfect heist, Cobb and his team of specialists have to pull off the reverse. Their task is not to steal an idea, but to plant one. Now I can hear you guys asking, what the heck is going on with this movie? I don't know either, man. Moving on. If they succeed, it could be the perfect crime, but no amount of careful planning or expertise can prepare the team for the dangerous enemy that seems to predict their every move. An enemy that only Cobb could have seen coming. Well, as confusing as it may sound to you guys right now, it is actually pretty comprehensible. Well, no, it is not. You will have to watch the movie more than once to be able to understand what the actual F is actually going on there. So yeah, if you guys have already watched it and have an idea about the ending, what you think is the right ending for the movie, please leave it in the comments down below because I'm still puzzled about it. But definitely a movie to recommend because it's Leo, man. He's not only good at acting, he's also good at directing and everything else. He's a good guy. And if you want to improve your English, go ahead and watch that movie. All right, I'm gonna give you guys one more movie and then I'll talk about two comedians you should watch. Now, this movie was actually published two years ago on Netflix. This is not a sponsored video by Netflix, but I'm assuming that most of you guys out there already use Netflix because it's a good platform, I like it. The name of this movie is The Irishman. It's actually weird that I like it because I'm not really into mafia movies actually, but this movie is starring Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, and Joe Pesci and is directed by Martin Scorsese, so this is a must. You guys have to watch this movie. I mean, it's crazy because it's three and a half hours long and ain't nobody got time for that, but, but you gotta have to find the time because it's just a lesson in acting. You have to watch this. And also in English, of course, if you wanna be familiar with the 1950s Italian New York accent, this is a pretty good way to learn it. So even though the movie is actually three and a half hours long, I'm gonna give you a short plot summary so that you can have an idea on what's going on in that film. Now in the waning years of his life, the feeble octogenarian Frank the Irishman Sharon, a former meat driver, powerful president of local 326 of Delaware's Teamsters Union, ruthless racketeer and mob hitman, finds himself confined to a wheelchair forgotten in a nursing home in Westchester, Pennsylvania. What are you trying to do, Mr. Scorsese? What is this movie gonna be like? Rary but still as silent as the grave, Sharon recounts his pivotal first murder, his ties to the notorious Boffolino crime family, the assassination of John F. Kennedy, the energetic crusade of the Attorney General Robert F. Kennedy, and his alleged connection to the murder of the American labor union leader and president of the International Brotherhood of Teamsters, Jimmy Hoffa. Now reconciliation is the only means to salvation. What's it like to be the last man standing? Now I watched this film like a series actually. If I were you, I'd at least split it up in half so that I don't have to watch it all at once, but it's actually still pretty interesting. The only thing that I didn't like about the movie was they tried to make Robert De Niro look like 30 and they did a good job on that because you know, it's Hollywood. Making a guy in his 70s look like a 30 year old man is definitely not an easy job. I get it. They did a terrific job on that. In the movie, I mean, Robert De Niro is literally 70 plus. And currently he looks like my grandpa's dead uncle. He is, I mean, like really old. It almost looks like the atmosphere is crushing him into a diamond. I didn't know there had been as much time yet as his age. Somehow they managed to make him look like 30 and he definitely looks like 30 in that movie. But 
He doesn't move like a 30 year old guy. He literally moves like my grandpa. So he's like a 30 year old guy beating up a man in a cafe in New York, but he moves like he's like, I mean, it's Scorsese and the legends acting in that movie, but it might come off a little long to some of you guys out there, so I'm not really sure, but it's definitely good to improve your English. It's not a standard American English movie. It's a little bit more like Italian New York accent, so it's more like, you know, I gotta go get some coffee. So as I said, I have two comedians that I wanna recommend because I am amazed by their funniness. So the first guy is actually South African and his name is Trevor Noah you might already know him if you ask me he is an amazingly hilarious guy he always makes me laugh but he's so cool he barely uses cuss words really and he still makes you laugh and he's just such a polite guy and he has the funniness in his jeans literally I love watching that guy and also he's got a South African accent which is sexy and he also makes a lot of references to various languages and accents and everything so I just adore that guy so this guy right here is literally the funniest guy on planet earth and his name is louis ck he's just the best i don't know how to describe him without being rude but he's basically an overweight bald-headed american guy who is actually very funny i mean he curses a lot and whenever i feel bad whenever i have a bad day i definitely watch one of his videos and i laugh and i cry laughing because that guy is just amazing i don't like his tv shows though he's had some tv shows they aren't really that good i mean his stand-up is funny but not his show so you should definitely watch his stand-ups okay guys so that's it for today's video i hope you guys liked it if you did leave a comment down below make sure to to like this video subscribe to my channel for more awesome stuff and i see you guys in my next video till then take care